It's the Raw Traveler here again. Hey, right now I'm in Pattaya, Thailand. This is right uh, just south of Bangkok. This is where the Gulf of Thailand is. So if you're interested in, uh, well, it's kind of a different type of atmosphere here. It's not quite a family place, but it's a cool place to spend one or two days. But anyways, back to the topic of the video. I decided to make a video about traveling for cheap and free, which is basically the, the topic of my channel. Now, there's another way that some people might not think of that you can travel for really cheap and for free and it's it's not doesn't require any kind of a credit score doesn't require having credit cards doesn't require having anything in particular you just have to have I guess certain skills that are either wanted by either an airlines or some kind of a, a company like UPS, FedEx, DSL, those kind of companies that basically they are airlines. FedEx, UPS, DSL, they, they do maintain their own airplanes, they do hire pilots, and they basically are airlines even though they're more like distribution companies companies that uh, sell, I mean, they, they deliver packages and they, they're logistics companies. There's a lot of logistics companies that uh, do similar things that, that UPS and uh, FedEx and DSL and companies like that do. So any, any one of those companies, you can probably find them online. You can search for them on Google or Yahoo or, or, or whatever your favorite search engine is and you can find these companies as well as all the airlines so this any country in the world that you live in there's probably an airlines in fact there may be multiple airlines and it doesn't necessarily have to be a large huge uh, jet commercial carrier like like uh, Delta or United or American Airlines, it could be a company like SkyWest, which is a small regional carrier. It could be a small regional carrier. It could even be a general aviation type of airlines. Most airlines, if you work for the airlines, you usually after about six months, and some in some cases maybe longer, nine months or a year, after you've worked for an airline, or a company like a UPS, a FedEx, or a DSL, you would be entitled to passes. In general, uh, these passes, I, I know because I used to work for an airlines back quite a few years ago, but I believe that the airlines work the same way as places like DSL, UPS, and FedEx because they kind of are an airlines, and uh, you are eligible to fly on that airlines. I'm not sure if it works like that with FedEx, DSL, and UPS because I don't think they would take passengers on most of their flights, maybe uh, occasionally. But you definitely would be able to fly with their partner, partner airlines, and I'm pretty sure they're because they are considered an airline, they probably partner with the major airlines. So I, I could tell you from my experience that you'd be eligible to fly discount on almost all the airlines if you were a, 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 not a customer, but you were uh, an employee of almost any of the uh, service companies like UPS, DSL, FedEx or any of the airlines or even one of the regional airlines so it doesn't matter what country you live in if there's an opening that suits your background in that airlines and you apply for the job uh, and you get the job 
after a certain length of time working for them and good in like as provided you of course uh, doing the job they expect and you, you don't have any negative things that's going on against you they will offer you passes in general if it's an airlines for example then you can write your own ticket basically you can go from almost anywhere that airlines flies and usually it's I remember when I worked for an airlines it was like fifty dollars which was some kind of administrative fee and then you can just write your own ticket and you want to go from anywhere to anywhere uh, round trip or return whatever and it, it was all fifty dollars and they would take the fifty dollars out of your paycheck so you didn't even have to pay that and you can go almost anywhere the airline flies and uh, you can find out and you, you would be going as as a standby or what they call in the industry a contingent or a con <laughs> and they would have uh, you'd be able to most of the time you'd either you yourself would have access to the reservation system so you can tell how many seats are open on different flights and if you don't you probably could find somebody in the company that could do it for you that has access to the reservation system and you should just look for flights that have extremely large amounts of open seats and because you'd be uh, low on the totem pole for getting free flights because they go by how long you work for the company and if you only just started and you, you got uh, the lowest level, you would have a hard time getting on if there's a lot of people that are way more senior than you trying to get on that flight. You'd be the last one uh, selected to get on. That's why I, I would suggest if you did that, you would look for flights that have very few, uh, like a lot of open seats, a lot of unsold seats and then you have a better chance of getting on it. So that's another way you can fly for free or really cheap. Uh, other than that, you can also marry into or find yourself uh, a live-in girlfriend, boyfriend, uh, significant other that is already working for an airlines or a company like FedEx or UPS or DSL. And then usually if you are legally their, their spouse, whatever determines that, uh, however that is determined in, in your state. Uh, so like in some states they allow same-sex spouses and so if you are legally there, that person's spouse you are uh, eligible to do exactly the same as that person does. So you can fly for real cheap and real free, uh, I mean and in some cases it's free uh, with that airlines and also if you're working for an airlines let's say its airline is Delta and uh, you can also fly on any other airline in the world for a huge discount and there's something called an ID 75 and an ID 90 which means like you pay and in the case of an ID 90 you can fly on any other airlines in the world and uh, pay 10% of the fare so you, you look at the full fare and let's say the full fare was a thousand dollars you would pay a hundred dollars for that flight but again you would be flying as a contingent you would be flying as a standby so you ought to make sure <coughs> somehow or other make sure that that flight that you're trying to get on has very large amount of open seats because otherwise your chance of getting on is isn't great and then there's another fare called the ID 75 which is probably the best thing of all because you pay which means you pay 25 percent of the full fare so in a case if it's a thousand dollar fare you would pay two hundred and fifty dollars for a thousand dollar fare but you don't have to worry about the contingency or standby you would be flying just like all the other paying customers so you get a great deal uh, I did that quite a bit when I was working for the airlines I would do a lot of these ID 75s what I would do is I would actually get a ID 90 ticket and an ID 75 ticket which you're totally allowed to do at least back when I did it and then if you can't get on as an ID 90 because there's too many seats sold you always have your ID 75 as a backup and 
because you see you you can fly back <coughs> home and had you got on as an ID 90 as a standby and when you get home uh, you had never used your ID 75 ticket you just have to re return that to the company to the company that you work for and they will refund you the money so you can actually miss the flight and you don't have to worry about it so that's that was a great trick that I used to do when I was working for the airlines is I would get an ID 90 and an ID 75 on the same flight and if I couldn't get on as an ID 90 I would use the ID 75 and then uh, I know at least I know I'm getting to where I wanted to get so that that's another great way to fly for cheap fly for free uh, you also could convince possibly if you are I believe a student if you're still in school uh, if you're under 18 for sure uh, up until I think the age of something like 24 or 25 and you're still a student and you're, you're a full-time student in school and one of your parents or I believe it has to be a parent uh, one of your parents or, or your legal guardian is an employee of an airlines or one of these uh, delivery companies like FedEx or DSL or, or uh, UPS you would still be eligible to fly on their status so in other words if they work for the airlines for 25 years you would have uh, a, you, they call it a C25 which means you would board the plane before people actually work for the company only like 20 years so that would be another way you can fly free is if somehow or other you can get legally adopted <laughs> by someone who's already working for an airlines so that's another way to fly for free and uh, real cheap uh, there's lots and lots of creative ways I will keep producing these videos hopefully you'll keep watching them please subscribe share this video and let everybody you know uh, hear about it that that's interested in flying for free because there's a lot of ways you can fly for free out there and uh, hopefully you're gonna be on another flight where I'll be seeing you real soon bye